What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video and today we've got a new patch inside of Helldivers 2 that has basically changed up quite a bit inside of the game and we've got quite a bit to get through so let's get straight into it. Starting off at the top, the biggest question is whether or not that Arx Roar got a nerf, and in my opinion it actually ended up getting a buff. Whether or not now we have to completely full charge this weapon in order to arc it every single time, and at the same time reducing our overall range from 50 meters all the way to 35 meters, 35 meters is still a good distance. One of the biggest things that changed up with this weapon is the simple fact that it now can stagger any enemy that it hits. And in my opinion, this actually ends up buffing this weapon and making it viable for both sides of the fight. It is still going to be a strong weapon when it comes to facing off with the Terminated and ultimately one of the best support weapons when it comes to being used for crowd control, but also having still a little bit of that single target damage for some of those beefier enemies that you'll be dealing with. Which is going to be even better now considering any time that you hit one of those hulks now on the automaton side of things, you will be staggering them every single time and not only that but it will also arc through that enemy into other enemies and also stagger them so having groups of devastators being able to get staggered through this weapon and also being able to arc that towards those weak spots and sometimes getting them down within at least one shot or one arc from this weapon and taking on multiple enemies dealing a ton of damage and being able to crowd control in that way as well as being able to stun lock them is a huge buff in my opinion so rest assured the arc thrower is still going to be a strong contender when it comes to the overall best in slot when it comes to crowd control from the support weapons. Coming up right after that we do have a buff to that of the anti-material rifle which has been a little bit noticeable when it comes to the automaton side of things. You may have played around with this on the bug side. I'm not a fan of using this weapon when it comes to facing off with the bugs. I believe it is purely intended for utilizing against that of the automatons and it is slightly noticeable but more so when it comes to facing off with the striders or star wars walkers they will now get two shot any time you're using this weapon along with the devastators taking three shots unless you're able to line up that shot on the headshot but if you've used the anti-material rifle before you'll know the sights aren't exactly the uh, best to work with inside of the game and don't exactly always line up with where you're wanting to fire but overall beyond that it's not the biggest noticeable change but it is something that will benefit a lot of those players that previously enjoyed the anti-material rifle and at the same time we're still two shotting those hulks if we're hitting them in the faceplate so it's still overall one of those solid weapons to use but it's not something that's being granted a major buff. Coming up right after that, we actually have a buff to that of the Breaker Incendiary. You may have noticed if you've been watching my previous videos that I have pretty much looked at this thing always as a meme weapon since the launch of the game. This was definitely one of those weapons that just felt like it was a bit better version of the Breaker Spray and Pray, but it wasn't exactly something I would consider most ideal. With the previous patch, it got a little bit of a buff that basically put it up on the chart of something that was decent at crowd control, but nothing too effective in my opinion but as of now with the further increase to its overall damage output for each pellet by another 5 damage up to 20 totaling 240 damage per shot and on top of that an increase to the overall damage over time for all fire inside of the game by 50% now the breaker incendiary is actually a best in slot weapon when it comes to being a crowd control main facing off with that of the terminate this thing is going to start shredding and it is finally being able to actually take down brood commanders it will still lack when it comes to the overall range department but when things are up close and you're looking to churn through some of those crowds this weapon is clearing paths for you and your team it is going to be definitely one of those weapons you're going to truly enjoy especially if you're looking to building some type of pyro build in the future which if you're looking for something like that we'll have a loadout coming up here in the next couple of days so hit that subscribe button we've got plenty more action coming here in the future but coming up right after that is the simple fact that we do have the 50% increase to fire damage or at least the damage over time from all fire source or all damage sources of fire that has that damage over time effect and this makes napalm a little bit better i'm going to be real with you it's not exactly the biggest buff to it it's doing a little bit now but it's not doing a whole lot the breaker incendiary and that of the flamethrower are basically carrying the torch when it comes to the overall fire damage in general this is something that definitely needed to happen but i'm still looking for something to further increase the overall capability of the napalm strike overall it's a step in the right direction but we're still not quite there when 
when it comes to napalm. I still think that needs a little bit of a buff to it, especially when it comes to its overall damage over time and the way that it's igniting some of these enemies. I've used it several times over the course of a couple of matches when it came to facing off with the Terminate, and it just wasn't killing the smaller bugs in my opinion. I don't need it to necessarily melt those medium type enemies. I'd be fine with it just barely doing a little bit of that damage over time towards them and then being able to clean them up with additional sources of damage. But when it comes to throwing a napalm strike down on top of a bug breach i would expect this to be something to where once those smaller bugs came up through that and started to get into that fire if they're directly in the middle of it while they're walking out of it they should be dying considering that damage over time should be something that's fully engulfing them and just melting them down but who knows this may be something that's fully intended considering if there's multiple napalm strikes maybe it ends up being in that category that that is where you get that absolute melting power and being able to lock down some of those bug breaches but that's something to test in the future and we'll be checking that out coming up right after that we get a buff to the liberator penetrator in the simple fact that it now just has full auto attributed to it this is something that just is a quality of life change this doesn't increase the overall capabilities of this weapon in my opinion it's still going to be something that feels quite lackluster to me and i hope that they give this a damage buff in the coming future short and sweet it's not exactly the greatest it's just something that feels nicer than having the burst fire Coming up right after that, we did get a change to the Diligence Counter Sniper, which has medium armor penetration. I feel like they did adjust the overall recoil for this weapon. It feels a little bit more like the original Diligence. It still has a little bit of that sway when it comes to moving around, very similar to that of the anti-material rifle. But it does feel a bit nicer against the bots with this weapon now that it has that medium armor penetration. But I'll tell you right now, it's still not something I'd consider to write home about. And a lot of times, especially with the scope that's on it, it's not exactly landing the shots exactly where I want it to, even though it will be something that can one-shot Devastators if you hit them directly in that center weak spot on their chest. Coming up right after that, we have the big talk of the town, which is going to be the new king in town when it comes to the primary weapons, which is the Jar 5 Dominator. This thing basically siphoned off all the power of the Slugger, which is crazy. They basically reduced the damage from the Slugger, and they took the Stagger, and they just threw it over here on the Dominator. And now the Dominator having an increased overall rate of fire, the magazine capacity, better damage than that of the Slugger as well, and the capability of having explosive damage with that medium armor penetration. The Dominator also got a stealth buff that was not written down inside of the patch notes that is very clearly reduced recoil across the board. This thing feels so much better than it did previous to this, and now it feels so much more accurate. It does still have a little bit of that sway when it comes to moving left and right and up and down with this weapon, but it is so much smoother than it was before, and it is so much easier to control this weapon. And when it comes down to melting power, this thing is going to be blowing through the competition. If you haven't used this weapon since the patch, I would highly suggest picking this one up, having a go with it because one of the biggest things to showcase about how strong this weapon is if you've ever faced off with the automatons you know those meat saws those berserkers the one with the chainsaws that come after you the beefiest biggest bullet sponge inside of this game all it takes is three rounds with this thing to its stomach and it's blowing through them i mean this thing is chewing through every enemy it has the capability of hitting the weak spot with and I believe it's because now it has 300 damage and it's full 300 damage because it is explosive damage towards those weak spots. So you can already tell with that medium armor penetration, the explosive damage component and the overall massive amount of damage this is already dealing, it is going to be melting through those enemies that you can hit the weak spot on. And sadly enough, the slugger is just not what it once was. The damage is still there, but the sheer fact that they reduce the overall stagger damage of this thing, it just does not bully the devastators. It's not pushing things around anymore, and it feels very lackluster to use right now. I don't know why they took away the stagger power of this. Reducing its damage, sure, I guess that was needed, but overall, this definitely did not deserve to get the stagger taken away from it. Especially considering the Punisher still has the same amount of stagger with more damage and basically if you're looking for something that's going to replace the Slugger and almost do exactly what the Slugger did, the Punisher is doing everything still the same as it was previous to the patch. You can still one-shot Devastators as long as you're aiming for the face with this and you can do it from a distance. 
overall the the slugger nerf is something that came out of nowhere it's not something i felt was warranted sure the damage could have gotten diminished a little bit but taking away the stagger from this weapon just does not make sense to me coming up right after that we did also have a change to all armors inside of the game so now heavy armor is reducing our overall damage taken by 10 percent and medium armor is reducing that damage by five percent which it is a very noticeable change this is going to make you feel a lot more tanky there's going to be a lot less of those moments that just feel like cheap shots where you got one shot by something you may find yourself in a lot more ragdoll moments and explosives on the automaton side of things we'll start doing this more often but at least once you get ragdolled you'll be able to just dust yourself off hopefully if not getting tossed around the map quite often and then be able to walk away hit a stem and then be able to get back in that fight instead of feeling like you just consistently get churned through by one shots from left and right or just coming around a corner and one rocket devastator just throwing rockets straight into your face and just giving you that cheap one shot it may still happen from time to time but it's going to happen a whole lot less and it's going to make heavy and medium armor a whole lot more viable and noticeable when it comes to its overall damage reduction Coming up right after that, we did have a change to the mech, the Patriot exosuit. It is much stronger now and it can survive when facing off against that of the automatons. It's still not immortal, so you will still be able to, you know, basically eat a quite a few rockets and it will end up getting destroyed. But overall, it can actually take more than a few of those rockets now. It's not just one rocket devastator coming out of the blue to basically instant kill that thing as soon as you come around the corner. There was nothing more frustrating than that and I'm very happy to see that this is now something that can survive on that side of things but i still think it's not exactly the best stratagem to use when it comes to facing off with the automatons for the simple fact of two reasons one the rockets aren't exactly that great when it comes to facing off with the automatons it's not dealing a whole lot of damage towards that of the hulks or any one of the other enemies and alongside that it's just not sighted in for the sites that you have for the mech so you're going to have some clunky aim just trying to get that done and even trying to utilize it as something that can destroy fabricators is still going to be difficult considering it's not sighted in properly and then the second reason is just the simple fact that the minigun is not destroying hulks and it's not destroying devastators all that quickly you're going to be burning through quite a bit of that ammo just to clear through a couple of bots in general and overall it's it, it'll feel fun but it's just not very effective and you'd be better off utilizing something like the orbital laser up until the point where we possibly get some of these new variants to the mechs that's when i think they're going to start to shine when it comes to facing off with the automatons but i'm very pleased to see that now the mech will be suitable for facing off with that of the automatons instead of having a different mech that just has a fully increased overall heavy armor system to it now every one of the mechs feels as strong as they should be instead of feeling a little bit glass cannony but that's going to be it right there people that's going to be the Patch notes basically summed up in a little bit of a brief understanding with a bit of that stress testing as to whether or not some of these changes are going to be that beneficial for you. That's kind of key highlighting some of the major things. I will be looking into the ballistic shield for its own video considering I already looked at that thing as if it was the worst stratagem within the game and now I will give it another go but I believe it will still fall under the category of worst stratagem in the game considering it's just simply put going to be something that can block some of that fire and whether or not it does end up being something that gives you the capability of pushing forward, the simple fact that one rocket still knocks you over with that thing and you drop it onto the ground isn't going to make it all that great. And now with flying enemy types and other things coming into the factor, I mean, it is going to be a whole different ball game when it comes to why would I ever use a ballistic shield over the energy shield, considering I, need just, I just need to have something that's 360 radius coverage moving through those jungles. But overall, I'm quite happy with some of the quality of life changes with this. Some of the things that have changed up the actual i guess quote unquote meta when it comes to the primary weapons and given us a bit of versatility still sad about the slugger i don't believe that was warranted i don't think that should have been something that ended up being a change or if anything you know the damage reduction was fine but the stagger shouldn't have happened but let me know that in the comments below how are you feeling about this patch how have things changed for you what are you enjoying what are you not enjoying and what do you think in the future is going to end up happening i believe something along the lines of everybody down in the comments below is going to be like oh man yeah you know highlighting the fact that the dominator is extremely powerful is going to get it nerfed i mean 
yet again, it's going to be one of those moments where people are just going to have their brains melting at somebody making content of the simple fact that something's good inside of the game, even though I barely even said even a word about the slugger, and somehow that's the only thing that got nerfed this time around. Good God. But by all means, you know, let me know in the comments below about that. They more than likely won't even make it to this portion of the video. They'll just immediately see me praising the Dominator and just be like, you're doing it wrong. You're the reason things get nerfed. But let me know how you feel down in the comments below. But if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to see more of this content live, hit that link down in the description below. Follow me over at Twitch. We'll be streaming daily. And on that note, have a good one.